You're listening to the West Forth and Gold Podcast, sponsored by Old Carolina Barbecue Company. I'm your host, Kurt Conrad, and I'm here with co-host Effie James and producer Noah Jones. We're coming to you from the IdeaWorks Podcast Studio on West 4th Street in downtown Mansfield. Guys, we're beginning our third season of West 4th and Goal, and things just keep getting bigger and better here. We have a newly uh, renovated podcast studio, and it's kind of like podcasting from the... I, I assume this is what the vacuum of space is like. It's uh, very <laughs> quiet, and it kind of looks like we're actually on the surface of the moon in here. It's uh, I don't know. It's a little distracting, but we will do our best to get through it. And speaking of new additions, we added a, uh, a title sponsor this year and Noah we are thrilled to welcome in Old Carolina Barbecue Company. Yeah, absolutely. Old Carolina Barbecue is authentic barbecue inspired by the Great Carolinas. If you don't have plans yet on Sunday, head on over there for All You Can Eat Barbecue. Their location in Ontario is at 2035 4th Street, and you'll agree that it's the best barbecue in town. In addition to Old Carolina, we're pleased to welcome back Two Cousins Pizza as the official pizza of West Forth and Goal. Stop by Two Cousins at 103 North Main Street in downtown Mansfield, or give Andy McIntyre and his team a call at 419 419- 522-2211. Two Cousins Pizza, the world's best pizza, relatively speaking. And F, our first guest this year is no stranger <clears throat> to the show. He uh, he joined you and I during basketball season last mm-hmm. year, and all he's done since then is take third place at the state long jump competition <laughs> and commit to Michigan State to play football. It's a, it's a great pleasure to have Mansfield Seniors Angelo Gross back here. And Angelo, uh, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, it's been a pretty eventful six months for you since since you were here last time. You, you originally verbally committed to the University of Cincinnati. You decommitted and reopened your recruitment. Uh, you ended up signing with Michigan State. You found time in there to, to place third in the state and long jump. Let's just start with your decision to decommit from Cincinnati, though. What, what initially appealed to you there, and why, why did you ultimately decide to go elsewhere? You know, I started off, I really liked uh, Cincinnati a lot, you know. The coaches, they seemed straight, you know, straightforward with me. But then um, once I tried to do my official visit, they started trying to push it back into December when I already had it set for like like a week or so away. So I found out that, uh, like, you can go on 247s and look who's down on officials. Mm-hmm. They had another corner down there. That's why I, they didn't want me to come down there, I guess. So they tried to move that, so then... Uh, I texted him and I was like, "Well, you know, I might, I might decommit." So, and I just decommitted and kind of worked out for me because Michigan State came the next day. And if I think that uh, that lends itself to a <clears throat> to a broader conversation about about recruiting in general, and you and sure. I talked briefly about it, it seems to me like uh, if you're a recruit, you don't want to be left without a chair when the music stops playing. And, Absolutely. And if you're a and if you're a college recruiter, you know, there's there's always another guy out there. Absolutely. And and I you know, I really commend, you know, kids like Angelo and, and a lot of other kids who are starting to see that, you know, this you know, going to college and is a great opportunity to get an education and that. But it's also, you know, both sides win. You know, an athlete right. like Angelo and, and many other guys, the schools win when athletes pick their school. So if they're you know, sometimes being wishy-washy or playing some games about whether they're going to give you a scholarship, whether they're, you know, what they're doing. You know, young men and, and women who are up for scholarships have the right to pick and choose and the situation that's best for them. And that's why they call it verbal commitment as opposed to a, a true written commitment. And I, I love to see young people, especially that have parents involved, taking full advantage of the full opportunity of recruitment and making a choice that's best for them, not just the convenience of that moment. So right. that's great. You always hear horror stories about schools oh, sure. asking guys to gray shirt or whatever, come in later or come in, uh, you know, as a preferred walk on and maybe yeah. not having, having money available to them. So, I mean, it's, it seems like it's an uncomfortable dance. Like you gotta, you gotta kind of dip around it a little bit. But the real schools, they, they, they understand that. They understand it's a two way street. They understand that just like, you know, they're not committed if they say, hey, we want to offer you a verbal scholarship. They're not committed to that until the paper is signed. And the student athlete shouldn't be committed to that until the paper is signed and, and go to a place where they're most comfortable and, and best fits their talent. And more and more, you're starting to see that with these young men and women. And I think it's a great thing. You think that's where a recruiter's ability to build relationships, I guess, comes in? Is that a big that's, piece of the puzzle? That's what it's all about, yeah. you know, that relationship. And I'm sure Angelo can speak to, you know, the guys that recruit you. Uh, they, you know, the best of them start, you know, they become part of your family. Right. You know, they call you a lot. They want to know how you're doing outside of just the games. You know, when I was being recruited, all they wanted to know was, you know, did you love football and how'd you play and, you know, what are your grades? Right. You know, outside of those things, they really didn't care much about, 
you know, you, but nowadays they got to get more in touch with who you are as, as a person. And that's important. Right. Angelo, how, when did Michigan State, I guess, jump on board? Were they always in on you or did they arrive later? And what were the relationships, I guess, you have with those guys like? Yeah, the defensive coordinator, coordinator uh, Chessel, he always been in contact with me. Okay. So, yeah, since like freshman year. Mm -hmm. But they didn't really like, you know, make any moves because I was, I was kind of small in my freshman year. Right. But then my junior year, he came to a track meet and he was like, yeah, you look like you got bigger. So then... <laughs> They got interested again. If I don't know, I would think that if defensive coordinator is the one who's shown interest in you, yeah, they absolutely. Uh, they absolutely <laughs> expect you to come up there. I mean, that, that's absolutely. a guy they really want, right? Right. That is the, you know, essentially the defensive head coach of the football team. And, and if he's, you know, if he is making the phone calls, making the contacts, right. that makes it real. And, you know, not that the position, co position coaches don't matter. They do. Uh, but, you know, just like anything else, their priority is, uh, when it's time to close the deal, you don't you don't send the um, you know the new guy, right? You know you you send you send the heavy hitter, and you know that's when you know they're these teams are serious about you. And Michigan State's defensive backs coach is a guy named Paul Haynes, and mm -hmm. Paul, I, I'm sure you know him. He uh, coached Chioke Bradley, Mansfield yep. seniors football coach at Bowling Green, and yep. same time you were there. Yep. What do, what do you remember about Paul, and what, what's he, what's he going to do well with Andrew? Uh, you know, Paul Paul was a GA. Uh, Choke and I's first year at Bowling Green, and, and and one thing I remember about Paul was his just intensity and love of the game. You know, when you know we got on campus, Paul was one of the first guys that, you know, he was telling us. He sat us down and said, "Listen, this is not what you think. You know, they showed you all the roses when you're being recruited, but right now you got to work. You know, if you want to be here, you're going to have to work." And one thing that stood out to me, and that's why I remember. You know, even though I was only there for a couple of years, I remember Paul for you know, his ability to teach and for him to connect, you know, he connected right away with us. And, and, uh, he's, he's a guy that I respected a whole lot cause he knew the game and he had a love for the game. Right. Did that, did that Angelo, did that relationship that, that Paul and Chioke have, did that kind of play into that? Was that, did that factor in? I mean, what, what Chioke tell you about him? Yeah. He was like, he's, a, he is a great coach, you know, like, as you say, he's great at teaching, so you're going to be great IQ for football. In addition to Coach Bradley, I mean, you have another pretty trusted advisor who's been through all this stuff before. Your father, Ali, played for Youngstown State. He finished at AU. He was a star at senior high in the mid-'90s. Just tell us how, how, how he's kind of helped you through this journey, too. I mean, every college recruit, he's there. So he really helping me figure out what's real, what's not, you know, who's real making certain decisions here, should we go here, games we should go to. He's just always there for the little details. Is that, I mean, I would imagine that's got to, that's got to be a huge benefit to a kid. I mean, that's huge. probably something that you didn't have coming up. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, the difference to me between what my decision, you know, to go to college, and I'm going to be honest, you know, as a, as a high school senior, I only really played one year of, of high school football. And so when a coach said, hey, we're going to offer you a scholarship, I didn't really know what that meant. You know, my father wasn't around. So, sure. you know, coach, the head coach at Bowling Green, Coach Blackney at that time, walked into my living room and my mother was sitting, my mother and grandmother were sitting there and he pulls out this uh, ring. It was a championship ring. They had won the MAC the year before. He said, look, I'm offering your son a $50,000 scholarship and a chance to win one of these rings. Now, you know, $50,000 is what you pay a year now. But right. back then <laughs> it was your whole college career. But, right. Um, and my mom said, I don't care what happens. This is where you're going. Right. <laughs> so it was it was less of, you know, I just didn't didn't know. So it's 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 got to be great to have a guy, you know, and I always tell, you know, uh, one of the uh, uh, JT Reese who's a friend of mine. uh me and him talk all the time about if we would have had us in our lives when we were young, how things would have been different for us and how things would have turned out. And Angelo has that great opportunity now. That's huge. And Angelo, we uh, we touched on it last time you were here, but I mean, if your if your last name is Gross and you live in Mansfield, there are <laughs> there are some expectations, I guess, right, Joke <laughs> or right, F and and what what's that like growing up? I mean, is it are, are you expected to do what you're doing? I guess. Yeah, you definitely expect it to just be <laughs> great, or fast, or something. <laughs> I think there were uh, there were six grosses on the on the roster last year. I haven't seen the official roster this year, but I mean, one guy graduated. Alamar Gross is, is a freshman at AU playing in the defensive backfield. I mean, it, it's got to be a pretty neat opportunity to kind of have a family reunion every every Friday night. I mean, what's it like playing with all those guys? Uh, it's great, you know, just 
it's just fun to see my cousin just make plays or Avion make plays and just see everybody make plays. It's just great. And Avion is your younger brother. Um, yeah. You had an opportunity to play with him last year. He was a freshman starter just like you were a few years ago. Um, what's that give and take like? What's that relationship like? I mean, do you, do you have a lot of advice for him? Yeah, definitely got a lot of advice for him. <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you tell him? Uh a lot. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe you probably can't repeat some of it. I guess here. <laughs> you were, like I said, you were a, a freshman starter in, in 2016, um, and I think your second career start, you guys played Kent McKinley here. Um, Kent McKinley, for anyone who knows anything about high school football in Ohio, is one of the most storied programs, not just in Ohio. I guess probably nationwide. I Absolutely. Mean, is that a? I mean, is that? What's that like going playing against the team? I mean, do you feel like you belong out there even as a 14 year old, or is it a little bit overwhelming for you? Uh, yeah. At first, I uh, like I remember our big Walnut game. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I definitely belong out here. Mm -hmm. Then we got to Cam McKinley. I was like, oh, it kind of big. <laughs> and if I would imagine that's that that's a big time program. Oh playing, sure, playing you know they have a like they have a national championship and um, they have such a you know, rich tradition there. And, um, you know, it, it's being from Mansfield, man. It, it, one thing I've learned, though, is, you know, now that I've, you know, been out of coaching for a while, you know, and, and traveling a little bit around Ohio, you say you're from Mansfield and you're a basketball or football player. People know who you are. Right. You know, people respect our, our athletic teams it, and for good reason. Uh, but that's always a surprise to me when people say, like, oh, you're from Mansfield. That means, you know, you, you guys can play. You know, and that means a lot. And that says a lot about our program and, and the history that we, we have. Because sometimes we tend to look at other programs like they're so much bigger, so much better. But, you know, we're right there in terms of history, to tradition of, of quality play and quality athletes. Yeah, I, 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 and I'm guilty of it, too. I think sometimes people around here take it for granted that mm -hmm. Mansfield Senior is the fourth winningest basketball Absolutely. program in state history. Absolutely. I mean, that's a, that's, that's a big deal. Absolutely. Um. Angelo is a sophomore, I think. You filled in at quarterback. Uh, I, uh, Sid Caudell was a quarterback at the time. He got hurt when you guys were playing, I think, Toledo St. John's. They had Dallas Gant, who's lining up for Ohio State nowadays. And you were you were th kind of thrown into the fire as a sophomore uh, playing quarterback against a guy like that. I mean, what's that What's that like? Is it Was it a difficult uh, position to be in, or did you, uh, you kind of relish the opportunity? No, nah, yeah, it was fun. Like, it went into uh, halftime. And they were like, well, we need a quarterback. Kit Sid's hurt. So then they tried Christian Haney. He didn't work. Then they tried Jornel. He didn't work. Then they put me in. And then uh, Var, Var Hudgens, mm -hmm. he was like, just have fun. So I just went out there and had fun. I guess it's uh, <laughs> when you're young, it's easy just to go out there and not worry about, worry about it too much. Huh? Right, right. <laughs> when you're better and faster than everybody out there, just have fun back there. That's cool. That year, you guys you guys made the playoff that year. It was 2017, and you were a sophomore. Um, you guys, I think, shared the conference championship with Ashland that year. Yeah, lost to Bay in the opening round. I, I think you scored a touchdown that game, didn't you? Yeah. And, uh, I mean, what do you remember about that night? I mean, has that kind of fueled your fire, I guess, for these last few years? Yeah, definitely. I, what I remember for that night is just I just feel like we just got kind of bullied. Like, we wasn't ready. But, you know, we're ready this year. And that, that kind of brings us to last year. I think you guys had some pretty high expectations going into last year, your junior year. A lot of a lot of guys back, a lot of experienced guys. And then you finished 5-5. Five and five. Now, you know, I think it's worth mentioning that all five of those losses were to playoff teams. But, uh, I mean, how do, you, how do you look back on last year? Was it kind of a disappointment for you? Or? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a disappointment. But, yeah, like you said, they're all playoff teams. But I feel like we we were right up there with them, so we should have been one of those playoff teams. And you started last season as a as the quarterback, while Cam Todd, who's the quarterback this year, he had to sit out the first five games after he transferred from Ontario. Were were you pretty comfortable doing that? I mean, I mean, and and I guess the bigger question is: is do things feel a little bit more settled? I guess this year, knowing that he's going to be back there, and you're not going to be back there for five games, and then switching out. Yeah, definitely. It's like, well, yeah. He's just in. We don't have to worry about anybody switching. You stay in your position, and we play. You played a lot of different positions last year, <laughs> and F. I think you and I talked about it. And kind of a the Swiss Army knife for Mansfield senior. He can do a little bit of everything. What do you feel like your best spot is? My best spot, I'd probably say safety, strong safety. Okay, probably. okay. And then I, I, 
Michigan State wants you as a cornerback, I I take it. I mean, is and do you like defense better than offense? Or oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> I mean, if, yeah. I mean, if you're in that situation, I mean, I guess if you if you have a big gun, you shoot a lot, right? right. I mean, that's that's the, that's right. get the ball to them however you can. Right, and you know, but I I, I do think that sometimes. Um, you know, you got to give defenses credit sometimes. So you have a kid like um, Angelo, and and you just say, well, we're just going to give him the ball. I, I can remember a couple years ago um, watching uh, Madison play uh, when Asian was there. Right, and, Tyrell you know, Asian, who's yeah, now a cornerback yeah. or a safety at Kentucky. University of Kentucky. Yeah. yeah, and I remember everybody in the crowd. You know, the the lay uh, football fan is just saying, just give the kid the ball. Well, listen. If you just give the kid the ball, who and everybody knows he's going to get the ball, you know it's, the game is it is easy, but it's not that easy. You can't just say you know I'm going to give it to my fast kid and he's going to make a play. Uh, so you got to you do have to be more creative. And what helps, um, you know, Angelo and and really the Tigers this year is they've got you know a lot of weapons, right? And you know Angelo is going to um, you know obviously get a lot of respect and a lot of attention, but. You know, they got a lot of weapons on the field and, and Cam Todd being one of them, you know, being able to make plays. You know, of course, they're going to lean on Angelo on both sides of the football, but having other guys just makes them more explosive offensively. And, and obviously, Angelo will be able to take breaks playing both sides and, you know, give a guy, another guy, an opportunity to uh, make a play. So it's really it really works well all around, but you can't just say, here, just give him the ball. And I'm sure Angelo can speak to that when he played quarterback. It was like, you think, well, the best athlete has his ball in his hands is going to be good, but it's not always that good. It's not always easy just because you're the best athlete on the field. Yeah, I would imagine that's kind of like putting a big X on your back there, huh? Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> difficult. Um, you're kind of a throwback, I, and I tell people this all the time. You you score a touchdown, and you, you get up, and you hand the ball to the official. There's not a whole lot of celebrating there. Uh, I mean, where, where does that workmanlike uh, uh, attitude come from? Is that, for, is that something that you – father instilled in you or? yeah definitely he always told me like when you make a good play like score a touchdown he'd be like you're supposed to do that so <laughs> and and if i think you played with ali was he was he kind of the same way there he was and and i think that and and to be honest i think as a family you know i played not only with ali i played with his um uh, older brother uh, Alonzo, mm-hmm. um, and you know all of them, you know, were intense when it came to competing, uh, but always sportsmanlike. Always, you know, they just wanted to win, and great teammates and uh, great guys to have on your side, just in general. And maybe I'm showing my age, but I kind of like it when guys just get up and they don't do the look at me stuff. They right. just do, <laughs> they just hand the ball off and go go about their business. Sure, absolutely. We still got a lot of things to, to talk to with Angelo, uh, including his performance at the state track meet last spring. We need to take a quick commercial break. You're listening to West Fourth and Goal, presented by Old Carolina Barbecue Company. Old Carolina Barbecue has recently installed a new drive through at their 2035 4th Street location in Ontario, Ohio. Go ahead and grab some authentic barbecue inspired by the Great Carolinas and use their drive through Old Carolina Barbecue, where the best barbecue in town is slow smoked with quick service. Welcome back to West 4th and Goal, presented by Old Carolina Barbecue Company. I'm Kurt Conrad, and I'm here alongside co-host Effie James, and we're joined by Michigan State University recruit Angelo Gross. And Angelo, how's that sound? Do you like the ring of that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I would think so. Now, now before the break, we uh, we talked just briefly about your performance at the state track meet last spring. Uh, you jumped 23 feet seven and a quarter inches. That was good for third place the year before. As a as a sophomore, you finished sixth. So uh, are you moving up three spots each year? You got one more. <laughs> Is there a state championship uh, in, in the in the future for you, do you think? Actually, I'll be missing track this year. I'm graduating early. Okay, I was going to ask you about mm-hmm. that, if, if you had, had intended to uh, to check out early. I mean, I, a lot of a lot of guys like to get get a jump start on their season. I mean, is that is that tough for you to do? I mean, you're going to sacrifice your basketball season too, I would imagine, then too. Yeah, it's definitely tough for me. But, you know, my dad was like, well, you know, got – Got to do what you got to do. So Bubba Toddy's school record of 24-10. Well, Safe again. It's going to remain intact for a <laughs> while. <laughs> now, I think you had the best jump 
of the season last year. I think he went 24-5 at, at the Marion Night Relays. And I don't know, F, if you saw the video of it, but I it, did. he jumped out of the long jump pit. Right. I mean, it's stunning, I mean, to watch. I mean, do you feel like that kind of opened some people's eyes in terms of college recruiting? Did you, did you get a few more phone calls after they saw you jump out of the, <laughs> jump out of the building? <laughs> yeah, definitely. After, after I spoke with any college uh, coach, they always bring it up. So. <laughs> Now, now, former Mansfield senior great Jornell Manns, I guess Jornell Brooks now, he decided not to early enroll, and he ended up tearing his ACL, and he's still recovering from all that. I mean, do you worry? I mean, can you afford to worry about an, an injury, or is that something you can't let enter your mind? Yeah, I still worry about injuries here and there, but I just I try not to think about it. Right, right. Well, before we talk about the upcoming season here, I think we should take a minute to update our audience on your younger brother, Jaden, and his battle with leukemia. When you were here last time, Jaden's diagnosis was still pretty fresh. How's he doing, and how's the whole family doing, and, and what's what's the prognosis? Is, is, is he going to be okay? Or? Yeah, he's good now. He's uh, cancer-free now, so that's great. Awesome. That is good news. How trying were these last few months, I guess, before? I mean, I would imagine, I, I don't know, I, I've, I've never had to deal with something like that personally, but... I would think the not knowing has got to be the worst part. I mean, it's just got to be kind of scary to not know what's going on. Yeah, it definitely was scary, but, you know, just just keeping him around all the time, and, you know, it was always great just to have him around. Now, I've seen some photos of, of the two of you together, and you're wearing your Michigan State stuff. Was he pretty involved in the in the recruiting process too? Yeah, definitely. He was like, he just always has something to say, you know. <laughs> Was it more? Uh, was it more exciting for you or him? Do you think? Uh, probably him. <laughs> <laughs> As an older brother, though, I would I would imagine. I, I mean, I'm the youngest, but I would imagine in a situation like that, it's got to be super super exciting to be able to share that with him. Huh? Yeah. Um. Now, given everything that he's been through in the past six months, does that kind of change your perspective, not just on football, maybe, but on life too? I mean, does it make you look at things a little differently? Yeah, definitely. Like for the longest, like he wouldn't even pick up a ball, like. It was just, it was hard. So I was just, I don't know, I was just was going hard every time I just stepped on the field or I stepped anywhere where it's time to compete. I mean, it happens to every athlete. They eventually right. face their athletic mortality, Absolutely. I guess. I mean, it, just earlier this week, I guess, Andrew Luck, the mm -hmm. Indianapolis Colts quarterback, announced his retirement. I don't think he's, he's not 30 years old yet. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine he kind of talked about it a little bit in his, in his press conference about getting in that cycle of injury and rehab and how trying it is. I mean, and F, you, you can talk to mm -hmm. to us a little bit. I mean, it's got to be it's trying psychologically as it is physically. Yeah, more so. You know, the the physical aspect of of an injury and it, it brings life into perspective. You know, when you have a major injury, just one. You know, I suffered one in college, and I, you know, I was telling you earlier, I couldn't imagine going through that process for three or four consecutive years, and. So to watch a young guy like uh, Andrew Luck step away from a game that he clearly loves and to say he just couldn't do it, I think people that have been through anything like that, it's no longer about football at that point. It's about, you know, life and understanding the, the trials of life that you have to go through and you put your life in perspective. And, and sometimes having things like tragedy with family brings about that same feeling. So right. you, you really put football and sports into perspective and actually, it, it makes you a better person. It matures you. It makes you a better man because you have a perfect balance now. You understand what's life and what's sports. And even though you give your all to sports, but there's a whole other side that's much more important, which is life. And that's why I'm, I'm proud of a guy like Andrew Luck who's going to say, you know, I, I choose life over sport. And uh, he's going to enjoy the rest of his life and, you know, you know, bravo to him. Right. And social media as it is, I mean, there's people who are attacking him for, you know, stepping away. I mean, can, can you understand where he's coming from, Angelo? I mean, is that, I mean, certainly I hope you never have to make a decision like that, but could you imagine walking away from the game you love? Uh, yeah, you know, it just has to be just like that, like with injuries. Like, yeah, I suffered a severe injury too, just one, and it was like, I don't know if I want to play next year. <laughs> like, it was just, I was always scared I was going to get hurt again. When I was out on the field, it's just being timid all the time, tiptoeing, and that's how you get hurt again. Right. 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 Yeah, you can't you can't afford that, right? I mean, yeah. it's got to be 100 miles an hour. Yeah, so imagine now doing that, you know, against, no disrespect, but playing at Mansfield Senior against, you know, 14, 15, 16-year-old kids, but now playing against grown men right. that – are, Who, whose livelihood uh, depends uh, on them tackling yeah. you right right so you know and having to do that with a little bit of 
you know, am I going to be able to hold up? And, you know, it, it, it's a lot to it, man. Football is a, is a sport. And, and that's really, that's why you love the game so much because it's, it's got so many facets to it. It's got a family aspect where your, your teammates, all the te- all the guys I've ever played with, I feel like are my brothers. You know what I mean? On every team I've ever been on, you gain a brotherhood with those guys. And, you know, some of the guys, teammates I have had, had at Bowling Green, I was only there for two years and I have lifelong friendships with right. a lot of those guys. And I tell people all the time, it's one of the reasons I do what I do. I think there are valuable lessons that can be learned, you know, playing sports. Sport, I mean, it's there's a lot of similarities between what happens in everyday, day-to-day life, you know, Absolutely. that happens on the field. Well, let's shift gears a little bit here. Let's talk about the upcoming season. Uh, the Tigers are they're big, they're fast, they're athletic. This is one of the better teams that I can remember covering, it, covering in 20, almost 20 years now of doing it. I guess in addition to you, Angelo, there's a couple other guys who are D1 verbal commitments. What are expectations for you guys this year? You know, everybody's setting the bar high for us, you know. But uh, we're just worried about our first game and winning that. And you got you guys are hosting Norwalk here coming up, and it's a Norwalk team that all they did last year was win a regional championship and play in the state semifinals. And mm-hmm. one of those wins in the regular season, and, I mean, they, they put it to you guys pretty good there in the opener. I think it was ended up being 42-21. to 21. They're coming to your place this time around. I mean, has that loss from last year kind of kind of been a uh, motivating factor, I guess, here during the offseason? Oh, yeah, we definitely didn't forget about it, you know. <laughs> so it's just prepare and execute. Well, without without giving away too many uh, too many secrets here, what's it what's it going to take to uh, to beat a team like that? I mean, they got a they got an offensive lineman who's committed to Ohio State. They got some pretty good running backs. Without giving away the game plan, what uh, what are you guys going to have to do a lot better this time around? I just execute. You know, we got everything we need now. Just execute the game plan. I'm sure that you know you guys don't like to look too far down the road. That's more for 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 me, I guess, as a sports writer. <laughs> and F and I can sit here and talk about. But I would imagine the playoffs are something that is is a pretty strong possibility that's I mean there's a lot of a lot of season between now and then but I mean is that something you guys talk about and are the expectations is it is it playoffs or bust for you guys this year I guess <laughs> you know um mostly is we we talk about it a little bit but not we talk about like we talk about winning the first game first right then we you know, then we talk about all the OCCs and playoffs and all that you know so we just worry about the first game the non-conference schedule uh, has, Chioki has never shied away from playing people. They right. got, in addition to Norwalk, Sandusky's on there. It's mm-hmm. a team that Norwalk beat in the regional final, I believe. Uh, right. I mean, playing teams like that, do, do you feel like that it's going to prepare them for anything they encounter down the road here? Well, it, it it builds your your character as a team, and having a coach and that's willing to you know put your program and put your team in those positions and really give you an opportunity to to be the best you can be. A lot of times when you play a, a schedule that is, be, you know, kind of beneath your talent, it it teaches or it shows your kids to play beneath their talent and they can still be successful. There's games that's, you know, I looked at that non-league schedule and I'm telling you what, you know, they're going to have to play. Right. You know, they're going to have to play to, to win those games. And that's what you want. You want to build that in. And you talk, we've talked earlier about the great programs and, and they're great programs because they beat great programs. And they compete year in and year out. And because of that, you build a culture of hard work competing at a, at a tremendously high level every time you step on the football field. And, you know, that's why I think when you start scheduling that way and then you get into conference play, you already built in that culture of we've got to play hard every time we step out on the football field. And, and you know, we talk about playoffs and championships, all that stuff comes with setting the tone in game one. How am I going to play when we step out here on the field? And mm-hmm. all that other stuff comes naturally, and it, it'll come if you do the right things in game one. Angelo, you're, you're nodding your head. I would imagine that this is probably stuff that Chioki is pounding into you guys. I mean, yeah. uh, what's, uh, what's, he, what's he telling you? Not to, not to look too far down the road? Or? Yeah, definitely. It's just We're just worried about winning game one, executing and winning game one, you know, and then we'll go from there. Right, right. I think that is probably the marquee game of uh, of week one here, but there's certainly a, a bunch of other games, and we might as well bounce around and see uh, who's playing who. I think Madison uh, 
Traditionally, they play Shelby in the opener, and that's the case again. They, they had been playing it on a Thursday night here the last few years, but mm-hmm. it is it is Friday. It's Shelby at mm-hmm. Madison, and Madison obviously has had some hard times here last last year, especially last couple of years. And I tell people all the time it's a lot more exciting in town when Week 10, when yeah. both teams are good, and Week 10 is very, very right. important. I mean, yeah. fr- from all, by all accounts, Dave Stupka over at, at Madison is kind of getting things turned around. I mean, yeah. it, would you like to see that happen, I would imagine, sooner than later? You know, I was telling somebody the other day, like, uh, uh, you know, and I heard somebody say about NBA basketball, you know, how the league is always better when the Lakers are good. Right. And I kind of feel that way about Madison. You know, I always feel like, you know, the area football is always better when Madison and senior high are competitive. Right. And, um, you know, and I like the fact that, um, you know, Madison went out and, you know, sometimes you when you're hiring a new coach it's it's in your best interest to stay inside that program but sometimes it's in your best interest to get a fresh voice that is not connected to the area and and steps in and gives a whole breeze new new air into the program and I think that's what they've done and and sometimes that is what a program needs to revive itself so um I think that you know I'm I'm hoping that Madison can get themselves back on track and you know they're they've got a tremendous football tradition as well and it, it's always better football in the area when when Madison is relevant and and I think they're they're starting to turn the corner in that right and I I mean I've covered that game for a long time now and I've covered games where Mansfield seniors has won handily and I've covered mm-hmm. games where Madison has, has beat the brakes off right. of Mansfield senior there's nothing better when it's a 21 17 game as mm-hmm. far as I'm concerned I mean <laughs> and you've been on some one-sided in you know, in some one-sided games in that rivalry, Angelo. I mean, is it as a player? Do you, is is it more fun when it's competitive like that? Yeah, definitely. You know, it's never fun when you just you know blow a team <laughs> out. You know? Sure, sure. I, I yeah, I, I couldn't imagine it would be much fun to go out there and win forty-two yeah. to fourteen or something like that. Well, I you know, as much as you'd say, look, I just want to go out there and have them roll over and we <laughs> roll up the points on them. In reality, you want their best shot. You want your rival's best shot all the time, and you want them to be competitive and of course, you want to win, but you also want them to be successful. Um, that rivalry is something that you know hasn't been itself in a while, but um, you know, but yet still, it's still a big game. You right. know, it's always going to be a big game. Uh, but but like I said, I, I really, um, you know, I'm hoping that Madison can you know get themselves back on track and and um, be competitive in in games. And I think this game against Shelby this week is is going to be a big tell. They've also got a new coach and trying to transition into a you know a new system as well so it ought to be an interesting game this week for them right and this this is that's the game that people remember right i mean after right. you, you <laughs> i i i was away at college but i remember hearing about the senior high yeah. madison game your senior year and i mean right. that's i would imagine that's still something people like to talk about huh? well i <laughs> you know and I believe that's probably the only reason why i got a chance to go to college is <laughs> because we won that well and uh, I, I talked to a couple people, and they tell me, man, we, you know, we passed the school levy that year that we desperately needed. Right. Um, I think our sports were going to be cut because money was so low in the city schools. Um, there was a levy like on the ballot that weekend, that next coming, you know, within days of the right. football game, and it didn't look good. We won the game, and the levy ended up passing, and. Um, you know, we next thing I know, I had colleges call. I had never had a college coach call me personally ever uh, until after that game. And it, it was it was just a great experience. And those are the games. I don't care where you go in life. Your high school games are the ones you remember vividly. I remember everything about that game, you know, going to McDonald's after the game and everything. You know, I remember so much about that night. And namely because it was Madison, it was a big game, and it was high school. You know, those are that's where your memories are made. Right, right. Uh, another big game this weekend. Uh, Ontario hosts, uh, or Lexington hosts Ontario, I should say. Uh, Lexington. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, in addition to breaking in a new coach, uh, Lex is without Mr. Football, and uh, right. Kate Stover is as a freshman at Ohio State. And by all accounts, he's doing very well down there, and that comes as no surprise to to me at least I, I watched him the last four years I think people were they have their black stripe ceremony or whatever mm-hmm. where the black stripe comes off the helmet and people were kind of making a big deal out of it I thought well yeah he got his black stripe off of course, of course he did <laughs> of course he did but I mean replacing a guy like that it's I mean how do you do that well you you don't what you try to do is uh, try to build on um, 
the culture that was set when he was there. You know, they were um, they were different. You know, and and that's what star players do when you when you have guys like uh, Kate Stover or Angelo Gross that you know is going to change the game, can change the game, uh, whether it's on the basketball court or on the football field. That gives your team, you know, fresh confidence, new confidence that they can win every time they step on the on the field, and. Um, there, the challenge is not to replace Kate Stover. The challenge is to find a person or a group of guys that can lead the team to that same belief. Like right. we can win just by going out here and the confidence that they built over the years he was there. Right, Angelo. I'm sure you had a good look at him the last few years. What what's what's it like going up against a guy like that? And I mean, I would imagine uh, as good as he was. I mean, knowing that you know you guys can play with him, it's got to give you a little bit of confidence, huh? Yeah, you know. It's definitely fun playing against him, you know. Every time you come across the middle, you definitely got to look out for him. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, he, uh, I could watch his his highlight video from his senior year over mm-hmm. and over again. I mean, he just lit people. I would be terrified to to go over the middle against him. Actually, uh, and I and I, I told the story when he was in here last year. That I covered their opening round playoff win against, I think, Tiffin Columbia, and I who they played. Yeah, and uh, – there was a, I have to take my own photos now, and it, there was a sequence where a, a Tiffin Columbian receiver was all stretched out getting ready to catch the ball across the middle, and then in the next frame that I snapped, there's number eight for Lexington just in the corner of it, <laughs> and all of a sudden that stretched out wide receiver, his hand stuck to <laughs> alligator arm, and, right. and Stover ended up picking off that ball. But I, a, a guy like that out there, it's, it's got to be terrifying. <laughs> oh, absolutely. There, it's a, you know, having people like that on the field, game changers, man, and and. High school football is about is 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 big plays and guys who can make plays. They change the game, um, you know. And, and when you watch video and and being a coach watching film, um, you shouldn't have to look for the Division One recruit. You know, they jump off the the film. And, right. and when you watch guys like Angelo or you watch guys like Cade, there's no question who's the who's the Michigan State recruit. Well, you sit down and watch a senior high game for about five minutes you know who's a who's a recruit and that's how it should be right um and you can be a recruit and sometimes not play like it right and you know that's when you know you're underachieving and and something's got to change in the culture of your team but when your recruits play like recruits that's when you got something special and, and i'm sure that's what uh senior high is looking for and and most other teams that have recruits are looking for and i tell people all the time and it dates back to when jamario o'neill was mm-hmm. a freshman and sophomore at Mansfield senior in the in the early 2000s those guys they just look different yes. I mean they uh they didn't look like they're running real fast but people just keep getting further and further <laughs> away from them and Angelo and Jornell Mans was the same way and Angelo right. and Cade Stover was the same way those right. guys they just they didn't look different <laughs> right absolutely you don't you don't have to look for the the stud on the field they they show they show themselves another uh, game I think of interest here locally at Clear Fork is at Fredericktown to open. I think the, the game that most people are more interested in is week two. It's uh, and, and not because of who they're playing. They're hosting Granville, but clear from, down in the valley, they put in some uh, artificial surface, and uh, yeah. by all accounts, it is absolutely beautiful down there. Well, I got a chance to, to take a walk around on the on the field um, last week. It is, it is tremendous. It is awesome. And just to see the, you know, I was telling somebody the other day the, the transformation of Clear Fork football. Uh, within the last decade even has been just tremendous you know so it's fitting that they get uh, field turf um, to go with their complete transition as a football program you know we're talking about a team 10 years ago they were wing t right you know they were a wing t football team two tight ends and they'll live with the result Um, but you know now they are you know they have expanded who they are their identity is different and they have got a tremendous winning culture uh, down there and, and I think that turf uh, really, really shows, and it really goes along with uh, their program and how they've transformed over the years. Right. And there's not a there's not a whole lot of schools around anymore. That uh, do you guys play anyone who's not on artificial surface this year, Angela? I mean, it, that, that's kind of the the rule now instead right. of the exception. <laughs> uh, Lexington. Yeah, I think Lex is just about. They're the, the last of the. They're the last. Of, I know they're the last in the league. Yeah, they're the so. one. The one holdout. Right. And, uh, I mean, that stuff is, uh, I mean, it's not, and we were talking a little bit of, off air a little bit about it. It's not AstroTurf. It's uh, <laughs> it's a lot better, I guess, getting tackled on that stuff, huh? Right. It is a, it is a different feel. And uh, I can remember playing our first playoff game at Parma uh, 
we played Maslin in the playoffs and they had true AstroTurf. <laughs> and um, we had never been on it before and they allowed us to practice at Ohio State the day before the game because we had never been on turf. And I'm telling you what, man, the first time I hit that, I wanted to go home. <laughs> I did. It was early in the first quarter, and I was ready to go home. I would imagine so. They just built that. They just laid down a carpet on top, a slab of yes, concrete. It absolutely. Like there was none of the uh, rubber tires shredded up that they have now. And then the idea to soften it, their idea to soften it was to put sand <laughs> where now they got rubber pellets. Well, it was sand, they called it sand turf. And so you pound on it, and sand would come up. <laughs> Oh, it was it was awful. Man. I think I still I still have scars. Still have the rug burns. I still have the burns. scar <laughs> from that game, and I, that stuff I'll never forget. Um, shifting gears a little bit, we'll do some smaller schools. Lucas is at Danville, and uh, I tell you what, they got they got a good thing going down at Lucas. They uh, mm -hmm. they've been to the playoff I think six years in a row. I mean, that's Scott Spitler is doing doing a job down there. Yeah, they they've uh, established again a great winning culture down there. The thing I'm interested to see. Um, uh, Logan Nicewander as quarterback right. uh, has got a really good arm. I'm I'm understanding and I, I'm loving to see without uh, Jeff Grover, their running back there, how they're going to open up the offense a little bit and, and show some people some different things out of Lucas. So it'll be interesting to see how their offense evolves now from a completely ground attack to now got a, a really a good quarterback with some great arm talent. Yeah, and Logan's a guy we had in here last basketball mm -hmm. season, and I think, you know, he he was great in football. He's great in basketball. I think he might even be a better baseball prospect. Right. From, what I, from what I understand, he has about an eighty mile an hour plus fastball. So uh, that's that's rushing up there on you. Um, yeah, it's going to be exciting to see see what they do. Um, I, I think that's going to do it. I, uh, you know, if you if you got nothing going on Friday night, or even if you do, go out go out and support high school football. Man, there's there's nothing better than that. Um, on that note, I think we'll put a bow on uh, episode one of season three of the West Fourth and Gold podcast, brought to you by Old Carolina Barbecue Company. Uh, thanks again to Mansfield Seniors Angelo Gross for joining us, and for co-host Effie James, I'm Kurt Conrad, and thanks for listening. And join us again next week. So long. West Fourth and Gold is a part of the Richland Source Podcast Network and is produced and edited by Noah Jones. I'm your host, Kurt Conrad, and on behalf of co-host Effie James, thanks for listening.